I'm Lucy Fink. I'm a video producer at Refinery29, but every so often I like to try other people's jobs. Today I'm hanging out with Courtney Quinn from Color Me Courtney to see if I have what it takes to be a blogger. This is Lucy for Hire. While I have a pretty substantial Instagram following myself, and I occasionally do paid brand partnerships on social media, my main job at Refinery29 is being a video producer and a lifestyle host. I find that I'm occasionally lumped into the blogger category just because of my Instagram, but the truth is, I'm not a blogger. Courtney Quinn, on the other hand, is one. So I spent the day with her to see if I have what it takes to do her job. Hi, I'm Courtney Quinn, and I'm a blogger at Color Me Courtney. Courtney lives with her fiance Paris and her adorable French bulldog Waffles, who's paralyzed in his hind legs but does not let that stop him. So I became a blogger kind of by accident. Um, I went to school for marketing and I had a degree in finance and I looked kind of like a numbers nerd on paper. I started a blog so I could start applying for fashion jobs and eventually get hired. So I think people think blogging is really glamorous and it's not a lot of work, but it is. Um, I always like to explain it like an iceberg, like the tip is all you see, but there's so much work underneath the iceberg that goes into it that you would never see. Most bloggers don't work for a big corporation. Instead, they work for themselves. They're aiming to build their following, grow their personal brands, and of course, make money. Okay, so let's talk about money. Someone with like about 100,000 followers on Instagram who's maybe just doing Instagram, I think you can bring in about $100,000 a year, somewhere in that range. You can charge like anywhere from like on the low end, kind of $500 for a post to maybe on the high end, like 2,500. And it's important to remember that's not just taking a selfie and like posting it, it's all the work that went into it, all like the back and forth. Um, a lot of times you have to pitch your idea to a brand ahead of time and kind of go through all these hoops before that actual content gets published. People pay way more for blog posts than they pay for actual Instagram posts. So even though it's only 25% of my content, it accounts for 50% of my income because people pay more for them. Yeah. I gotta start a blog. <laughs> you really Whoa. do. Whoa. <laughs> and based on Courtney's formula, I'd say she's doing pretty well for herself. So after gathering a little bit of background about her day-to-day -day happenings, she put me to work. Your first challenge is self-management. One really cool way to grow your following is to partner with other influencers, and it's an also a really good way to pay it forward and share your followers with other influencers and kind of get exposed to their followers too. So it's just win, 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 win. I've done a few of these collaborations with other influencers, but Courtney does them all the time. It's an amazing way to grow and expand your audience. So today we partnered up and we each put in a little bit of money to give a gift card to one lucky winner. Two, Two one, one, post. <laughs> we shared our posts at the exact same time and each told our audiences to follow the other. By the end of the day, we had each gained a few thousand new followers from this. Now that we're growing your following a bit, let's go make a pitch deck. Next, Courtney showed me what a typical media kit would look like, and we sat down to evaluate hers before I made my own. So basically, you just want it to be like a quick one snapshot of your personality, stats, facts and figures, contact information, if you have a manager, all that kind of thing. So are you ready to try? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think I've got a good idea of how I want to arrange the photos, yeah. and I think I know a few photos I want to use. Most of daily life as a blogger involves creating original content, so you won't get that far by reposting other people's photos. Be creative, be innovative, and stay true to yourself. As a blogger, you're responsible for building your own brand, so the best thing you can do is set yourself up with all the tools you'll need to truly sell yourself. Your second challenge is content prep. So one thing I spend a lot of time doing is scouting locations. About one day a week, when it's nice weather, I'll like go out for like three or four hours to a new neighborhood, walk around, put in a podcast, and just look for colorful ideas. The two of us took a little walk to scout a nice shooting location. They'll use cabs a lot of times for yellow. How far or in this radius do you usually go to get location scouts done? Oh, a lot of times I'll take a car to a totally different neighborhood Smart. and like try to figure it out because I kind of get sick of doing like the same neighborhood. So you would never do something like no this? Uh-uh. Okay, it's raining. How are we gonna shoot out here? I don't know. I'm sweating. <laughs> you gotta push through. It was hot, it was raining. I stepped in a puddle. An all around exhausting experience. 
I'm just about ready to shoot right here. No, nope, that's not gonna work. This we is have it. To keep going. We found the spot. We have to keep going. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but for Courtney, location scouting is a major part of making sure that her feed stays colorful and vibrant. This would be cute of you because you have like a cute little matching outfit. True. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Once we returned, Courtney showed me the other major part of her content prep phase, the prop closet. Over time, Courtney has accumulated a ton of gear to shoot with. Different cameras and lenses, various types of lighting, tons of backdrops, and more. But when she was first starting out, just like I did, she just used an iPhone. Once we were ready, we started our shoot. Your third challenge is to shoot. I've got to say, I'm pretty happy it's pouring and we can't take this outside. Because of the rain, we set up indoors by pinning a solid colored sheet to the wall to use as a backdrop. And then we steamed it to make sure there were no wrinkles. Then we set up the cameras and lighting. I, I actually really do love shooting and I could shoot every single day, but it can be challenging because a lot of times I shoot on my own by myself. So I have this little like pop-up tent. Get in there, change, hope it's not a windy day because then you're like falling all over um, to change into the next look so that I can get out and keep shooting. After we were happy with what we shot, it was time for my final challenge. Your final challenge is to edit. Since Courtney and I are both into making stop motion videos, we always receive a ton of questions about which editing program we use. Neither of us uses stop motion apps or a stop motion program. To edit this stop motion video that we shot together, I just used Adobe Premiere, which is a video editing software. It takes a little bit longer than a stop motion app would, but it gives you more freedom and flexibility. But the real test on whether or not I'm blogger worthy comes down to photo editing. My mom took this photo, so it was just on like generic settings, and mm -hmm. that's why the background, like this was a really yellow building, but it's kind of blown out. But now adding this like warmth to it. When I'm traveling and like my mom's taking my photos, mm -hmm. or just like someone random on the street, like I don't always have the best opportunity to get the right settings that I want. Right. Creating great content is obviously where it starts, but what happens post-creation, I'm really able to just transform it with the editing process and make, you know, a not so great photo, something that's up to par with the usual standard of what I create. Before, after. I want you to try one. And this photo is really cute, but I think you can make it cuter. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, this photo of me and my brother on horses. Where were you guys? Anguilla. Oh. But like, I feel like that water was probably bluer than it looks in this photo. Mm -hmm. The sky the looks sky totally looks, gray. Yeah, blown out. And I like, my brother's not even paying attention. He's taking a selfie. Brothers. All right, I'm gonna fix it. Yeah, I think you can fix it. And then I gave it a go. I edit all of my photos on my phone, like using like free apps because I just want it to be something that other people can do too. The before and after is really crazy. You oh ready for gosh. this? Before, after. Goodbye, Robbie. <laughs> well, that's what you get for taking selfies. That is amazing. Being a blogger for the day was not only physically draining, but I really did get a taste of what it would be like to work for myself. Your success and how much income you can bring in are tied directly to the amount of work you do and the amount of time you spend hustling. I pull all-nighters all the time, at least one a week, usually two to three a week, just because there's so much to do and it's only me and if I don't do it, it doesn't get done and everything relies on that. So the next time you think blogging looks effortless, just remember how much work actually goes into it. And just know the market out there is highly saturated. So if you want to do this full time, make sure to bring a fresh angle and something completely original. There's only one you, so show the world what you've got. We'll see you next time on Lucy for Hire. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Click here to watch another video on Refinery29, here to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and right here for my, sorry, did I just hit my mic? Personal YouTube channel. Woo! Say cheese!